Lastly for you today, a former Michigan Tech athlete's achievements go far beyond the ice. Jake Durant tells us what makes John French of the Copper Country a remarkable veteran. I was three years old. I remember sitting at the end of the, the table eating cornflakes. My dad came home from work. Uh, he worked third shift at the time. And he was talking to my mother and she says, hey, well, do you think John would like to play hockey? And she's, I remember, well, I don't know, ask him. And that's kind of where it started. He took me over, we got equipment, learned how to skate, and then after that I was kind of addicted to it. John French learned to set goals from an early age. Kind of had a bucket list that when I was 16, 17, hey, what do I want out of life? And, you know, when, you, when you're that age, a lot of it is, is more, hey, I want this kind of a truck, or I want a house here, or a bass boat, or whatever. And I had made my list, and a lot of the things, you know, you know, I was very, very fortunate with, to accomplish. Hockey took French to Michigan Tech. I think the biggest thing that sticks with me is, is the guys I played with, uh, my freshman class coming in, uh, the seniors and how they treated us, and, and the camaraderie and the antics uh, amongst the players on the team. I mean, there are some great times, and when I look back at, at my short career, that's. That's what I think about most is, is the guys that you played with. As time went on, he continued to cross off adventures. The last thing on my bucket list is there was uh, three of us up caribou hunting in Alaska. And there's a self-guided, so they drop you off for 125 miles from any nearest paved road or town. They just, three of us with 72 pounds of gear, including our rifle piece. And uh, they drop you off one by one. And I realized when I was the last one there, it's like, well, man, this is the last thing on my bucket list. So naturally, what do you do? You make another list. With a new list and his wife's support, French felt called to serve his country. There was other factors on uh, 9-11. You know, everybody remembers where they were at 9-11. Um, some of the guys I played hockey with and uh, locally with the Pioneers, uh, they were in the military and they were deployed to Iraq. They had kids, I didn't have kids. And it, you know, it was just one of those things where Maybe naive thinking, but if I went, maybe one of those guys wouldn't have to go. They could stay home. French joined the Army on September 7, 2007 to become a combat engineer. A year later, he was headed to war. Um, our job over there was route recon, route, route clearance. So any kind of IED, we were kind of like the dog in the leash out in front of uh, anybody else going down a certain route. Uh, we were trying to engage the enemy rather than have like the convoy behind us engage. No matter his role, French found ties to the game he loves. Everyone's got a, a role, and everybody strives to be the best they can in that role, just in support of all the other players on the ice and on the bench as well. When you, when you look at a military setting like that, it's the same way. The only thing different is you're wearing a different uniform. Then came July 19, 2009. On July 19th, I was struck in the chest with a rocket propelled grenade, came through the turret, detonated on the front chest plate, and first of all, there was, you know, you'd think it would, would hurt. It actually, it wasn't that bad. It, it, didn't, it didn't hurt that much. It knocked me back in the turret. I was in the, the turret. I was a gunner in one of the lead gun trucks and it knocked me back into the back. Uh, it felt like a halfway decent hockey hit. You know, if you got caught with your head down and you, you're paying for it, and, but it's like, man, I'm good. I can, I can still breathe. Um, I lost my eyesight for, for 14 days. Uh, had a numerous uh, internal injuries, but I was still awake. I was still functional. Thank God for the guys in my truck. They were all wounded. Every single one of them was, was wounded. And uh, we all helped together. And, Put, finished putting the tourniquets on myself and kept moving down the road. And just like in hockey, you know, if, if uh, you get railroaded or run from behind or cheap shotted, uh, the other guys on your team, which happened to be my platoon, are gonna stick up for you. And, and that's what they did. They, they fought back the enemy. They made sure that I was safe. Their entire truck was safe. And they, they brought in the medevac and got us all over. Recovery was slow. I, I wish I didn't leave. Wish I, I didn't have to leave. But at the time, uh, part of my right arm was missing. My right elbow was blown off. Um, I was pretty banged up more than they thought. And they, they shipped me back to the States. And that's where I became, you know, started my recovery. Before French could leave the hospital, he needed his next three goals. I want to I wanna be able to eat right-handed again. I want to be able to fire a firearm, long gun, right-handed again. I want to be able to play hockey. And right off the bat, you know, 
everyone kind of chuckled, like, well, you got to be reasonable about your goals. And my retort was, they're my goals, not yours. I'll find a way. No injury could keep him away from the ice. He put a full artificial elbow in me. And I was like, well, what, what are my limitations? And he was like, oh, you can only lift 15 pounds. And, and uh, he says, you got to be careful because there's only so many of these we can do. And uh, he said, do you have any questions for me? I'm like, well, yeah, actually, how long before I can get back on the ice and start playing hockey? He chuckled and he said, no, it ain't going to happen. And I'm like, no, seriously. And he's like, yeah, no, it ain't going to happen. French's bucket list is far from empty. Every uh, year I go back for an annual checkup. And I didn't tell the doctor what I was doing. But after the second or third time, he's like, you know what? I don't know what you're doing, but whatever you're doing, keep doing it. So I kind of took it as, hey, you're playing hockey? I'm going to write you a script to play hockey. Go play some hockey. With a salute to veterans in the Copper Country, Jake Durant, Local 3 News. Thank you for